Okay, well, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, on behalf of those of us on staff in the executive office, we really appreciate the opportunity of having this open exchange and uh, initial briefing with our SIG leadership. We see this as central to the process of making the transformation from a place-based meeting to a virtual, um, a virtual 2020 annual AERA. And so we're here to tell you where we are and to learn and listen from you uh, about where, um, where with your SIG hats on, um, your, you have questions um, or issues you think we should consider and see this as an iterative process. Um, for those of you who I don't know yet in person, I'm Felice Levine, your executive director. And I'm joined by Nathan Bell, Director of Governance, who is uh, virtually with us. Uh, are, you, are you on video, Nathan? I'm not on video, but I am on uh, mic. Audio. Okay. So he'll be here, too, to uh, remind me of all the things I both forget or might not yet know. And to my immediate right, uh, Robert Smith, who's a Director of of meetings and to my left who will be moderating the questions and trying to synthesize them so that we at least use this hour to get through the most salient uh, that uh, is Tony Powell's like director of, of communications. We did sort of craft an agenda uh, and I want to introduce uh, Denise Perdue from Sorensen who's with us today and splitting the screen with me and she's doing our signing, uh, and we uh, value that tremendously because that will help us um, both see the virtual capacities of signing uh, for various kinds of activities that we project virtually, as well as enable those who uh, need that form of assistance uh, to have that available for this meeting uh, we hope tomorrow's meeting and, 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 and these more extensive exchanges uh, with our leadership. So um, with that, we know some of you may have participated in the two open sessions that we have offered to uh, registrants and participants uh, at the annual meeting, um, which was roughly 500 on Tuesday, 500 on Wednesday. And if you, uh, I would say uh, for the SIG leadership, spread the word uh, that uh, we welcome participants at the third meeting. Uh, that's an open meeting. And that is, um, I think it's at Easton's savings time, noon to one, noon to one tomorrow. Is that two, right? Two to three. Two to three. Tomorrow, the open the open meeting was two to three. Yeah, one I think it's two. one to two. One right, two. good. Okay, so um, the uh, I'll just say uh, briefly what you may have uh, read on the fact sheet that was distributed to all members, all registrants, and all participants um, Tuesday. What was implied in our opening announcement uh, and. And I want to really thank the SIG leadership. You've just done a fabulous job of stepping to the plate as AERA leaders um, collaborating with us. I have the opportunity of, uh, of uh, seeing the listserv for all divisions and all SIGs, as does Nathan, as governance director. And you were encouraging and supportive and recognized the transformational challenge and opportunity that we face together. You encouraged your members to join and participate in these listening sessions and, and it would not have happened um, in the way that it did. And with the numbers who turned out and you all from day one, not just jumped to the plate and, 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 really, and really pitched in. So, uh, we're going to continue to need your pitching 
and Sinker Pitching, we're kind of one family in this and in the virtual meeting. And so, you know, we, we want to do this in a way that works for all of our units, uh, SIGs, divisions, and all of our attendees, many of which are members, but not all of which are members. The virtual meeting will be uh, offered as an open access product. There will be no registrations. There will be registration to enter the uh, to enter the portal, <laughs> the theater of sorts, so that we know who's participating and the numbers who are participating and can do a post-virtual meeting survey of those who um, chose to be part of the audience and of course the many who we hope will present. Uh, but that will be a uh, essentially an open access uh, product. Meeting registration fees, a letter will go out from our registration bureau and service that um, where the refunds will, will be a credit on credit cards for those who pay by credit card. For those who pay by check, we will refund uh, a check and we'll get that information and, and issue a check. There's been a great deal of interest in among many attendees, both members and non-members, about um, really helping to assist the association that is here both to advance and serve the field in the interests of our membership. And there will be uh, included in that a donation opportunity of the registration fees in whole or in part. Uh, but, um, but whether one is positioned to do so is really um, uh, up to the registrant, it's our anticipation to return uh, the whole of the registration fees and anything else, any other, any other choices um, uh, that uh, individual registrants chose to do. We will be offering nine, is that right? Nine courses. We're going to be announcing those nine courses tomorrow. Uh, the annual meeting uh, will be delivered in real time in the Pacific time zone from the 17th to the 21st. There will be nine courses that will be offered on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, yeah. I think, 25th. And, um, and those who register for those courses will have the option of having a refund if they do not wish to um, uh, to participate in the online experience. We've offered online, at the annual meeting, we've offered um, attendees to be virtually present in real time to ask questions and participate just as the place-based attendees do. And so we hope that those who have opted for the courses will continue to do so. And we hope that additional registrants will also continue to do so. So you see in the agenda, professional development courses week two, because we're viewing week one, which is a, of course not a full week, uh, to be the annual meeting, um, uh, meeting uh, dates. Uh, as I think you all should know already, anyone who made their reservations through the AERA housing service, uh, that their reservations, uh, and they paid, they paid in advance, nothing for those booked reserva uh, reservations and all of those reservations have been essentially canceled or on their way to being canceled and no individual um, who made reservations through the hotel, uh, uh, through, the ho through our housing bureau um, uh, will have uh, any cost associated with that. Um, uh, travel is another challenge. Um, ARA cannot uh, uh, cover the travel of attendees to the annual meeting for very uh, obvious reasons. We're, we're monitoring every day, and I'm not sure, I think we were planning to post the fact sheet. I'm not sure if there is one up yet, only because probably this thing is changing in the moment. But from thinking there were cancellation fees that would be the encumbrance, at least for most domestic travel, Many airlines have uh, indicated that there can be rebooking without cancellation fees. Some airlines had 
I'll have Tony amplify that in a minute, but some airlines had uh, the requirement that you needed to go to the gateway city of San Francisco or wherever your destination. Many airlines have begun to look at that, and Tony has the up to the minute. Um, so, so we do have a fact sheet about uh, airline waiver fees mm -hmm. listed on the microsite. Great. Uh, you, right. you get to it through the general fact sheet. Right. Oh, excellent. Perfect. So it's it's up there already, and it will be updated as we learn more. And one of the reasons why we put that up is because um, even in our initial letter to all, all of our, um, our registrants, participants, and members, we indicated that, uh, that, that they were likely to encumber change fees. And now, over the four or five days uh, since last Friday, more than five days, six days now, uh, things have really changed rather rapidly. Um, I'm hoping that, um, I don't know, uh, I'm hoping that uh, that, that some of what I've just said has been accessible to you and that there aren't a lot of questions about uh, about those aspects. So let me just say a little bit about the, uh, under the assumption that many of you or most of you were not on the uh, first two uh, general sessions, uh, how we see the program unfolding. I think the most important part of creating this virtual platform is that it is our aim and our intention to preserve the content of your program. Your program, the division programs, the program planned by the uh, Presidential Program Committee, the AERA-wide sessions, the international sessions, and other uh, the committee sessions uh, and the most important place that we started from is that those who submitted papers or those who submitted session proposals that were accepted in the program should have the opportunity for an authentic experience in what is now going to be the virtual annual meeting. We started with a worry and a wonder about what we could create. And we had these terrific ambitions so that the meeting would indeed take place in virtual space. And I can, I am, uh, with our exploration of many, many sites, which happened well before the announcement last Friday, we had many scenarios. What could we do and how could we do it? Should we even relocate the time of a place-based meeting to a different time of year? But as we learn from the science, from the epidemiology, from the knowledge about the spread of disease, that, that we wanted to be the educative society that was responsible to all of our attendees and participants and to the city we might have visited and to the publics and other associations that we felt AERA was well positioned to lead. So this virtual platform will allow all paper submissions accepted in the program to be located in a virtual space. You are now looking at, I hope, Denise on one side and Felice not to say we're rhyming, on the other side. And so if you envision instead of Denise and Felice, that one entry portal after the welcoming to the virtual meeting and some general information, one portal will be the paper gallery and that you enter that paper gallery and those who seek to participate in the virtual annual meeting, just view that as our place in the World Wide Web. 
they will be able to upload slides and will be instructed with tutorials about their options for doing so in all kinds of different templates, about 10 or 12 different formats and templates they can choose from the most simple to more complex. They can upload animation. They can upload um, video. And, and, and what they also can, can and will do is, is do a voice narrative as they might do at a round table with people sitting around, as they might do in a paper session, as the paper presenters present in sequence, or as they might do in a poster environment as members of our community walk and see poster to poster. And those will be uh, about six minutes in length. They could be shorter, they can't be three times longer, uh, but they will, you know, they will be a nice presentation that uh, will capture uh, the, essentially, the essence of what, what's at the heart of the paper, the contribution, and those papers we will encourage in advance to be uploaded in the ARA online paper repository. Instead of that being a post-meeting prior, we will be encouraging authors to upload those papers. Those will be released in uh, those will be released when the annual meeting virtual site opens. They will be time and date stamped and assigned a DOI number. So the virtual platform can link to the metadata and the virtual platform for those who choose to upload their papers can also link to the papers and be discoverable and citable and more broadly available. On the other side of the screen, if we imagine that Denise is the paper gallery, we should imagine that Felice is the, um, is the theater, which you can enter to see all forms, all session submissions accepted in the program, all invited submissions, which may be a lecture, maybe a standard symposium, maybe a great debate, whatever the format of those session submissions, whether it be in the invited program or the competitively uh, selected program, will be available for those symposia that have a critical mass of participants. Those will be available through Zoom in real time Pacific time. There will be an opportunity for Q&A from, from uh, the audience attending. And then they will be uh, available as an on-demand product because we are not only Northern and Southern Hemisphere, but we are worldwide, all time zones. And for some, Pacific time zone uh, will, be, um, uh, uh, will be less accessible than for others. So that's the essence of what we're doing, the general sessions like the openings, uh, like the, um, um, uh, the opening uh, plenary, uh, the presidential address, the Wallace lecture, the distinguished presidential address, other invited lectures are all part of the invited program. Uh, we're uncertain about the general award session, but if I had to put my best guess on, there'll be some form of um, uh, the inclusion of the general, uh, which is a plenary, the general award session for the ARA wide awards. We were going to change that from a dessert from last year to a, uh, a more theater seated event. Uh, and, uh, and that's on day three. Uh, what time on? 10.35 Pacific time. And I'm uh, going to anticipate that something like that will probably happen. That's the one of the, of the general sessions that we're still giving some creative thought to. Things like the fellows breakfast or other forms of activities that are more particularistically oriented receptions that we all have, uh, the joint social justice section 
uh, reception, obviously, there's no such thing as a virtual reception yet, although I, I could say if my, my colleagues on staff and, and our uh, collaborators uh, uh, in this project with some wonderful technological interfaces uh, could invent something, would be some virtual uh, um, uh, celebratory uh, eating and, uh, and, uh, 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 and, and toasting uh, experience. Uh, so that's at the heart of what the meeting will look like. We are really encouraging and we'll need all of your help and support to encourage participants to take advantage of this. Those who, those who in particular uh, uh, early career scholars and graduate students that have such a major career stake in having an authentic opportunity, we will make as authentic as we possibly can only those who choose to participate in the virtual meeting will be meeting presenters uh, or symposium presenters. Those sessions that fold will be no different than sessions that fold and don't, don't happen in San Antonio, where many of you know for a variety of reasons, uh, after the US changes in immigration policy, many international persons could not participate. There was an, any number of persons who chose not to come to San, San Antonio because of um, a bathroom bills pending and uh, gun carrying laws. And this, this virtual space, I suppose, may not be as attractive to everyone as we hope it will be. But, but we hope that by your joining with us, uh, we'll, encourage, uh, we'll encourage paper presenters and session participants to to give it a try. It's going to be a valuable experience. There will be many people who could not come to the meeting who will now be able to join worldwide without fee. And we think there's something special that we're creating that we will learn from, not just in terms of what that may mean in terms of other forms of annual meeting innovations, but other forms of innovations that ERA can pursue in many, many different ways. So there is a week three planned, and that week three we thought would be a time, which I think is typically an hour and a half time, is that right? Where all of our SIGs can schedule in a grid that we will provide, but they can be multiple events at the same time, just as they are, where you can schedule your business meeting and that you'll be able to announce your business meeting, you will be able to hold your business meeting. Uh, we'll probably still tag it to Pacific time just because we don't want to start confusing people in the mathematics of conversion here. But you will be able to pick your Pacific time. It doesn't have to be the time you're, you were scheduled to have it for a place-based meeting. It will be on the third week at our 160-ish SIGs will then have the opportunity to have your hour and a half and to um, have uh, presenters and have attendees designated just as um, uh, Nathan and, uh, and I and my colleagues here with me are, uh, are, are attendees. And for this purpose, you are audiences participating with Q&A. You will be able to do that. I suppose you could, if you chose to do that, have threaded discussion. And that was that we thought was a very important way both for SIGs who want to do it and opt to do it and divisions as well. We're speaking to the division VPs this evening and that uh, the division VPs are all members of council. Those 12 division VPs sit on council, will participate in the decision and unanimously participated as a council in the elimination of a place-based meeting in 2020 and the support for a virtual meeting. And so we want, without elongating this, uh, uh, this uh, virtual program as a non-stop forever after event, we think that this these three weeks are about what we can uh, we can expect uh, participants to have their attentions held 
and to um, and to be engaged in um, uh, in these and these activities. Um, I suppose. Let me say that that I, we do want to hear what might be ideas and opportunities for pre-conference events. Uh, but uh, let me say, other than the professional development courses that will be week two, we're interested in ideas about the different ways you might seek to do your mentoring sessions. We'll be talking to the VPs about that, but both as a matter of time and we are only 36 days out. We are building a platform that does not exist for conferences. We are changing a platform that was developed and is quite innovative, but was developed for on-site visualization of poster sessions. And we cannot, it, it, and this is going to take all of our capacity, the 30 members of the staff, the, the teams that we put together and are convening and creating a family of collaborators. It's going to take every minute just to open up this virtual set, uh, this virtual meeting and make for the success we have. And this is an expensive product. <laughs> this is not, uh, uh, it is being delivered cost-free to the participants and the attendees and the audience worldwide. But to think that we could start day minus one, zero, minus, minus one, one sometimes, zero with other kinds of programming and both afford it and pull it off in a polished way would be, um, would be on the other side of ambition and innovation and probably would require me to at least classify myself as in the zone of delusion. And I can't, I can't lead uh, in a way that I don't think can be successful. And we're intending this to be successful. So we're interested in the other ways we might think about it in some preliminary conversation. Actually, the division VPs thought, you know, We've got to realize that there are students in classes, there are people teaching, there are people in a variety of practice and policy workplaces, uh, there, are, there are employers no longer having people that work, and indeed ARA is thinking about what are we going to do next week. And of course for us in the, in what I call the peace room, because we certainly don't want to call this the war room, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be a small scale staff that's going to be working on this to make this possible. And so even last week, our council thought we might be running people dry, just offering more and more and more. And, eat, and the division VPs were thinking that some things just may need to be skipped. Look at all the meetings that are being canceled. Uh, the NBA, you know. <laughs> Just, uh, just did it. The houseware show, the you know the high tech industry. So many meetings. The the physicists had their meeting, and and they're going to offer some virtual poster sessions for what were I think their poster sessions. And so we're going max out, uh, but we've got to we've got to create some boundaries, and and that's a that's a boundary that um, that we've uh, uh, essentially created. The the um, uh, I suppose, uh, so that kind of covers the pre-convention events. Let me just say for the moment about the training sessions. Those we think are very important. Um, uh, just as we have the virtual learning center, we populate the virtual learning center with courses from the annual meeting because that has been a efficient way of getting great faculty and affordably providing courses for in particular students and early career scholars. The only reason why we do uh, the training sessions, whether it's for webmasters or uh, in person for the, for the SIG program chairs and for the SIG leaders is because we're all there together. Of course, we want the 
interactive exchange that we can't totally reproduce here, but there's no reason that it needs to take, now that we're virtual, we don't have the rubbing of the elbow possibility and in the informal moments for this year, although we're trying to preserve so much of that, but it would be far easier, we felt, for the SIG leadership, for the webmasters, for the program chairs, for the SIG chairs, to have what have to be virtual sessions, not scheduled on the uh, 17th to the 21st during the real time of the meeting, so that you don't have this essentially extra burden but that we would, uh, working with our SIG executive committee, uh, working with um, the persons from all academic, from, for all academic training, uh, for our webmasters, that we would schedule, come up with a schedule that would be separate Zoom, interactive Zoom opportunities that would probably be in May, well before well before offices are expected to do too much <laughs> and well before any submission date for the 2021 annual meeting. So that will continue. Uh, what that will continue to be is they will be offered virtually, but we really didn't want to put the added stress two ways, frankly, on what we're delivering with content and with what we really want you to be able to participate at a substantive and content level. And since it is going to be virtual, and since it is going to be by Zoom, instead of creating a week four, or trying to shove it into week three, we thought we could develop with our state executive committee a schedule for these leadership training events that would be, um, that would be located uh, um, in May. So those will exist, but not in the, 17 to 21 zone. Um, and um, let me ask uh, Nathan, do you want to kind of cover the awards issues and what we were thinking about how we could do that functionally? We hope, I'll say this is like a trial model to be informed by the conversation and the questions that um, we hope that uh, you raised today that we hear about tomorrow. And if we need a third session to work that out in more detail, uh, as we used to say in Brooklyn when I was a Dodger fan, we'll do it next year, but if we won't do it next year, we'll do it next week. How's that? David? So in terms of the awards, the plan is for all AERA approved SIG awards that the uh, certificates and the plaques and the checks will be distributed by mail. Uh, we are in the process right now of taking inventory of what certificates and plaques we have electronic signatures for. For those where we, where we need to, we'll be reaching back out to SIG chairs to ask for you to send us an electronic signature. We'll provide information about what formats and how to do that. Um, we will also be verifying mailing addresses with the recipients of those awards. So that process is going to take us probably two or three weeks to get all of the materials and everything that we need to, that uh, we will be mailing, as I said, all the checks and the plaques and the certificates. Did you want to give anything? Yes, and I suppose on the presentation side, if that would normally happen in your business meeting, then then you will have your business meeting and then and that would happen in week three. Uh, I suppose that in some SIGs, award recipients give talks that are scheduled invited sessions outside of the business meeting. And if those exist, excuse me, as invited sessions in the substantive program, that would happen um, in the virtual convening on the 17th to the 21st, just like any, uh, just like the Wallace lecture or the distinguished contribution to education research, the award winner from last year gives a lecture this year, the uh, early career scholar from last year gives a lecture this year. If you have that baked into your substantive program, that will occur just as I described the invited 
uh, or the symposia, competitively selected uh, uh, session submissions. So if it happens organically at your business meeting, that's when it should happen. I'm assuming that we've now accounted for all the ways it could happen. It's either part of the substantive program and will happen. If they give it next year, they'll do what happens uh, for next year. And if it happens during the business meeting, you'll incorporate that into your uh, business meeting uh, planning. Um, the issue of uh, travel awards that each of you may make to graduate students is complex across the whole association. Um, were, uh, and we, uh, I, this will ultimately require um, a decision of council. It's one of the things that we did not anticipate. Uh, we want to hear from you on this because actually the encumbrance is for six, an encumbrance of the six. So we'd be interested in sensing and getting a sense of your pulse about whether you were thinking for those who've encumbered expenses, uh, providing, or if this would be your preference. In the end, it will be an AERA-wide policy. It's one that we have not um, engaged with in detail. What we have engaged with in detail is how much of all kinds of different things are going on uh, and how much AERA and the SIGs are investing and divisions in this collective effort, how much this is going to cost in real, real loss of revenue that makes this association operate, and how much the reinvention is costing. And if that, uh, it is not to say that each person receiving an award, and that is most typically graduate students, um, have other sources of revenue, whether universities will be, or uh, institutions will be trying to bridge some of that. We're going to have discussions with our affiliate groups and our deans of colleges of education and our other research institutions to talk about their collaboration and participation, including on this issue. Um, I think in the end, in the end, we're going to need a common decision, and we can't leave this to um, 200 different different ways of doing this because there would be nothing more off-putting to graduate students and early career scholars than to put our SIGs and our divisions and our own programming in some odd competition where someone says to the SIG chair, well, uh, well, the, uh, the X SIG um, uh, provided us with Y stipend because we encumbered this loss, but you're not doing it. And that is why the, um, the uh, divisions, uh, even though some divisions are smaller, some divisions have more resources, the divisions together in, com in common determine the stipend that they each give identically to their graduate student rep to the graduate student council. And uh, in the end, it's, it's healthier. And it's, I suppose a judgment call, but I, I think the council will view it as healthier to make a decision that reaches to all of the programming that involves uh, travel awards. So with that, let me open it up. And I'm sorry, I hope that briefing didn't go too long. We can go, um, certainly for those of you who can stay on, we can definitely go an extra 15 minutes or so to, to, uh, to have this run a half hour of Q&A. And as I said, uh, we will be sure to entertain the possibility of an additional open session after the two that we've had. And others of you can join that one, because we'll learn from this one how to better structure that one. Okay, there have been a few requests for further clarification on what's, what will be happening during weeks one, two, and three. Okay, okay. Week one, 
which will be the 17th to the 21st, the annual meeting days. We will be uh, providing a platform that maximally are all persons who are giving papers and they will have an opportunity to present in virtual space those papers where they will have a presentation template and a narration with other tools that they will be able to make available. And attendees will either participate in a threaded discussion or a Q&A, depending upon the paper giver's preference. And the paper giver will set the time to make uh, themselves available for that. It might be the time of the session, but because of time zones, they might pick a different time. All of the sessions, those accepted through the competitive submission or those invited session activities that could be lectures, could be debates, could be the symposia, could be the demonstrations, all of those session submissions uh, will have, will be invited to confirm whether they wish to do those sessions in real time live through Zoom, those will be recorded and in perpetuity would be the asset from the 2020 meeting. That's what the essentially the virtual meeting will look and feel like. We'll have training in advance, we'll have deadlines in advance. We're going to encourage all of the as close to maximum participation of all of the invited and competitively selected session submissions to participate in the virtual platform, which will be live, recorded, and thus available on demand. And the all of the paper submissions, whether those paper submissions are presented in a paper session, will no longer be paper sessions. Those papers will participate in the gallery of papers that will be constituted of poster sessions, paper sessions, and paper presenters who present at roundtables. And that is that is the virtual the virtual substantive meeting. And when you look at a program, that is the virtual substantive meeting. When it says program, after it says governance events, after it says other forms of events. The program starts with presidential sessions, ARA-wide sessions, committee sessions, ARA-wide includes the international sessions, and then it has the division programming, including symposia, including paper sessions, including roundtables and posters. That is the substantive program. That substantive program will be available to everyone who opts in the 17th to the 21st. The professional development courses are not part of that program. They are, they are listed in the schedule, if you go onto the PDF of the schedule or are quite familiar with it. Professional development courses are interspersed at the times they begin. Some, but the pre-day ones are full day or many are and the ones that are integrated into the program are four hours. These will all be four hours. There will be nine of them, and they will be offered from the 18th to, uh, from the 22nd, 25th, 22nd to the 26th. We'll announce those, uh, we'll announce those nine sessions. Week three, will be the programming of SIG and division business meetings. Those will be, will give, will provide a grid when every, every SIG and every division can schedule themselves. Those will not necessarily, unless you opt for it, be the time that you were scheduled to do it, but the time grid will be in specific time and we'll issue that. And, it, and we can have, we really could have as many operate concurrently as you'd like, but I think we'd like to impose some degree of, 
of, um, so that we can monitor and support that. We probably would not want more than 20 at the same time slot, 20 to 30 ideally. We will be, during the week one when the virtual meeting is being delivered, we're going to be offering in real live time 30 to 40, but that's going to really be a both uh, stress and the need to have adjunctive support from technological experts to help us. So we would prefer to be able to implement a week three on our own. And I would say that probably means no more than 20 SIGs having concurrent business, as SIGs dash divisions having, um, and that's only 12 divisions plus the SIGs, that in the schedule will probably allow for no more than 20 at the same time. But there'll be a lot of time slots. Are there dates for week three? Uh, week three will be week three. Uh, that will be, uh, what's that first? 27. Yeah, whatever that first Monday. 27. The yeah. First. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, um, uh, we may, uh, uh, well, I suppose we, we'll, we'll run it five days. Well, we'll offer it for five days. I think that'll give, uh, that'll create more, not that this is U.S. centric, but um, that'll create at least a good distribution across morning and afternoon without going too early in the morning or too late into the evening across kind of core times if we open it up five days, I think that'll give a lot of latitude to schedule them between eight in the morning and you know probably end it by 5.30 or something like that. There are also some requests for clarification on how exactly paper sessions and round tables will be handled virtually. Yeah, paper sessions and round tables will no longer be integrated activities. All those with accepted papers will be part of the individual paper gallery walk where individual, ad, and that will be true of those sitting at a round table. We can't create, um, uh, we can't create that many simultaneous sessions. And the ones that are most interactive are the, uh, the, where we would want to preserve the conversations among presenters are the symposium. So we went with, we originally thought that only be 30 symposia, some handful across six, one from each division, the presidential program doing six, and we've now done all symposia. And what we will be doing for paper sessions and roundtables as well as poster sessions, is that those were persons who submitted individual papers. That we want to acknowledge and authenticate those individual papers. And in the paper gallery walk, each of those papers, uh, the presenting author for each of those papers, will have an opportunity to present with an audio narration to present their overview in slide templates that will be offered. We'll be able to triangulate to the paper that's in the online paper repository if they choose to share it and make it available. That will have DOIs and will be citable and preservable and discoverable. But we will not be holding paper sessions. We are going to ask each for those paper sessions that have discussions, we are going to ask, and I suppose SIGS could work with us on encouraging what you prefer, but for the SIG formally paper sessions that will now be individual presentations, which is what those paper sessions at least are at their core, meaning it is individual presenting authors, presenting papers that have, do have some effort to obviously make for uh, sessions that cohere. 
that when there is a discussant, the discussant can participate if that is an option for the discussant who might be willing to do so and for the paper presenter. So let's imagine it's four to six papers and a discussant. Many of these sessions do not have discussants. Maybe there are two discussants. If the author and the discussant are agreeable to do so and they identify the time, they can do so in a threaded discussion or with the discussant offering comments in advance if, if it's not a threaded discussion, but a Q&A. But there will not be a, um, a paper session just as those individuals who present papers at symposia will not be in the paper gallery. Their, paper, their opportunity will be in the collective event called the session submission or the invited session. And, and that seemed to us to be a good choice point where uh, there isn't also a duplicative uh, presentation mode. There's a question about what uh, presenters can choose to opt out of. Uh, presenters can, paper presenters from the 7,000 plus papers accepted can, if they choose to opt out of participating in the virtual meeting, and we hope that that's a very, very small set because this collaboration is something that is not about the offices, you as offices, we or I as, as an officer, our staff, council. This is a collective event. We hope people find it exciting and buy into it. But it is like the virtual meeting is like going to a satellite in space or deciding to go to San Antonio or go to Toronto or go to New York. Only those who choose to be presenters in the paper gallery will be authenticated participants in the virtual annual meeting. We have people who can't go for a variety of reasons. We think this virtual opportunity is exciting and inventive and really special. Some who choose not to be in the paper gallery uh, will not be participants for their paper in the virtual meeting. They uh, can upload very brief, it doesn't have to be complex visualization. They can have really, they can just actually, if they have nothing they want to show, they can just show themselves for, uh, uh, because when you move from slide to slide, uh, you, you, uh, uh, the visualization drops off, but if there were only one slide or you have a presentation slide and then, uh, and then, and then it's the speaker, that's fine. They can take their time and speak um, uh, and not use the recorded narration or they can present some visualization as often presenters do in a PowerPoint or a poster, it's essentially a poster set of complex frameworks, but you can do it as simply as you want from one or two to different formats and layouts. Um, it is not required that the paper be, since it has been voluntary, we encourage papers located in the online paper repository because that's a virtual sharing that is identifiable, that is citable, that is preservable as the paperwork of uh, presenters. We are counting the numbers who have already sought to be part of the paper repository. That would link to the platform as soon as we open. And that is not required to put the paper. Uh, the metadata will be there in the link. That's not required to put the paper in the online paper repository. We'll probably have a separate session on the value of doing that and why the sharing of the paper really is enabling of authors. On the other side of the spectrum, the competitively accepted symposia or session submissions and the invited will have to meet some critical mass standard because just having the chair of a symposia and what are interactive sessions with one or two presenters 
is just not a go. Uh, so we're going to have to come up with some uh, baseline number of symposia participants to make the symposia go. There are a few questions about uh, what SIG chairs will be responsible for coordinating going forward and what will be handled by AERD Central. Well, the one thing I'd say, um, just as you really have been terrifically what we've done, mem membership drives, I think you'll be our uh, support system collaborators, as you've already shown yourselves to be in so many listserv emails that I've had the, really the privilege of reading from you. You will not in any way need to deliver this. We're going to deliver this for you. you um, but we would like and hope and, and suggest that we might provide some talking points as we have when, um, uh, which you could use or not use. And obviously this has to come from your own heart and words, but we very much are hoping that you are fulsome collaborators. As I said, if this virtual conference could be all that we imagine and envision, that this will be just a special opportunity uh, for those who are presenting or those who were only attending and wanted to learn about the fabulous kind of work that the community that constitutes education and research are engaged in doing. So I suppose, I suppose uh, cheerleading, encouraging and, and, um, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know what your program looks like, and 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 if those uh, if there are, this might be something the program shares and the SIG uh, SIG chairs uh, sort of take to heart. You know that you could say, you know, if you're, I mean, we shouldn't anticipate ambivalence, but if we see ambivalence, uh, that you could say, hey, you know, we'd love to work this through with you because we'd love to preserve the SIG program. It's a great opportunity. It's people who will not have had a chance to hear about your work because they're not having to travel place based. And so let's walk it through together because we, we will try to walk it through with guides and learning aids and drop boxes. And, um, but uh, that encouragement, that access, that how to problem solve at your level with your program chairs and your SIG chairs and other offices uh, to make this virtual meeting a success would be really enabling. Uh, encouraging those for whom we've selected courses that are across the methods and modalities among those that have reasonably decent or enrollment already. Some of those might choose to not participate. We're going to keep those open, uh, promoting them, uh, encouraging people to make benefit of that virtually would be a big plus. And I would say thinking through how to make your business meeting up in to the business meeting option and think about that transformation. And maybe we would do maybe one briefing along the way on some thoughts that the SIG executive committee uh, has and sharing some thoughts that some of you might already have about how to make this hour and a half uh, really an engaging opportunity. That might even be something that in addition to the business meeting at ARA every year, where you also often have a reception and other kinds of activity and the informal networking, where you might decide to have a general open meeting for your membership that's a virtual Zoom call six months into the year. Um, uh, and, and so this is a way for you to think about how to use this asset that we're providing here in the platform week three um, uh, in the same way that we're really trying our hardest to be as creative and inventive and inclusive as we as we can. So there's a question about what if SIGs have a plan to offer their own Zoom meetings with their own Zoom channels? Yeah, so we are saying we are one association. We're all part of the same organization and the truth is the answer is that that would not be within the guidelines of what is permissible for a SIG to do. So we're, uh, 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 it's an ARA integrated meeting. It would undercut the purposes if every, every whatever that is, if every committee 
chose to do that with their sessions. Division chose to do that. We are an integrated organization. SIGs are an organizational part of the association as our divisions. So there's no going it alone. We're a family. So there's no such thing as a no fault divorce. And we hope you appreciate that. And we hope, we hope that, that if you had been thinking about that, and we know that, we know so many of our units were just thinking, you know, thinking about it in a really positive way. You know, how can we help out? How can we use our assets? But the best way that we can serve the field is to, is to do it together. That's why we have national and international associations. That's why you're a SIG and not a freestanding organization. You're part, we're all part, we are not. The association in SIGs, we're not the association in committees, we're not the association in divisions. We are one. And there's no better way to build upon that asset. Without SIGs, there is no AERA. Without divisions, there are no AERA. And we can't support, we can't sanction, and frankly, frankly, going it alone uh, would raise questions of about the viability of any part of AERA to remain a part of AERA. And that's true of any part, because I've seen it with other parts. So there are a couple questions about uh, pre-conference workshops yeah. and sessions. How are those being accommodated? So that's what I said earlier. Right now, um, other than the uh, courses, we want to hear your ideas, and council's going to need to make a decision about that. So, I suppose, um, uh, have, have any thoughts been have any thoughts been posted about? Uh, it will not be in a pre-conference modality. We don't have, uh, we can't plan that and have a successful meeting, which is why the nine courses are coming. The week after, there is no way that we can have, we can create and invent this platform to serve or afford, because this is not an inexpensive process, or afford more events than what we've told you about. But we're interested in, as I said, the VPs actually thought we kind of saturate things. So for their mentoring events, Oh, we're going to talk about it again this evening at 7.30 to 8.30, and we want your thoughts. And, uh, and it may be that we need to create another one-hour session just to hear some of those thoughts. In the end, we'll bring some, uh, we'll do some inventive thinking with you. Um, and some of that inventive thinking, frankly, we have to recognize how many meetings are canceling and really not doing anything, or not being able to do much, or or, uh, uh, but, so some things, some things just don't happen. And some things just, it's kind of a wait till next year and, and, and we just have to appreciate that. Life has changed. And life is gonna be changed for quite some number of months. So we love working together place-based. In all probability, we're going to have a work at home option. Universities and colleges are closing. Workplaces are closing. Elementary schools and school districts are not able to have their students come to class. That's a stress and a strain. And so the, if there's one thing that we may all give up is the pre-conference events planned that are AERA-wide. AERA, we have a bunch of pre-conference events ourselves. Uh, divisions have pre-conference events, affiliate groups have pre-conference events, and SIGs have pre-conference events. And uh, I suppose one could either view those as events that you've already invented for next year, or maybe that'll put you on a fast track. I'm not saying that's the only route, because we, uh, we do want ideas, but we, we have to recognize that, um, that there, you know, there's also that, uh, you know, we all know that there's going to be uh, pain and loss, and this may, this appears to be the lowest casualty pain and loss. The highest casualty would be to have no annual meeting this year that offered a vehicle for attendees 
for presenters, for those whose careers depend upon, particularly early career and graduate students, their opportunity to present because they were competitively submitted and they are in what is going to be an authentic meeting. Not a place-based meeting, but it's authentic as if we were all in San Francisco. There are a few questions about um, deadlines for uploading papers mm. and other presentation assets. So um, we're working on those deadlines and I think by Monday we'll have a more refined schedule. So I don't want to set dates, but uh, uh, but the, what I will say is and said yesterday in the open discussion that the uploading of the final paper um, is March 20th. For those, we say in the rules, for those who don't upload any different paper on March 20th, the initial paper submission is the paper submission of record. We are, we are very interested and really encourage authors of papers or presentation papers and symposia to make those papers available in the online paper, um, in the online paper repository. So we are going to extend that so that more authors can see the benefit of not just uploading their paper, which really few see, except those participating uh, in, that, uh, in that session, in the case of paper sessions. There are in paper sessions, I suppose we could undate it to anyone who's in a paper session. But really, that's no way of presenting in a public meeting. Uh, I, and the best way of presenting in a public meeting is what was required of me as an early career scholar and many of you on, on the phone. And that is a requirement of presenting at annual meeting is you brought whatever that was, 25 copies, and they were in a paper room. And they were sold for my time, 25, then 75 cents, and then a dollar. I, uh, and, uh, and, and that was part of, uh, that wasn't, that was, that was normal. We somehow have created this reticence about, about sharing work in progress. Now the virtue of the online paper repository is that it's citable, searchable. There is no question that that paper can't be exploited in any plagiaristic way because it's time dated, stamped, and authenticated. So we hope that through giving additional time, more will choose to put their paper in a paper repository. Otherwise, we're, we are giving that additional time, but frankly, the, paper, the papers that we give additional time to that aren't shared really, really are just put in, put in all academic and are available to no one. So we hope that you partner with us in encouraging putting those papers also. For those who didn't opt in yet, that you partner with us in encouraging that. So the deadline will change. I said yesterday, it will be a material change. It won't be the 16th of April for obvious reasons, because we want to try and triangulate the papers in the repository, the program, the all academic program and the app and the program that will be in the, uh, in the virtual meeting that all of these will speak to each other and point to the metadata and point to the papers. So we've got to get those papers so that whether they're sharing the paper or not so that your metadata is in the online paper repository. So it will not be trivial. You're not gonna hear from us that it's March 21st or 22nd instead of March 20th. We're not, we, you know, we're not into being punitive. We're into being as expansive and inclusive as possible to encourage of uh, putting those papers in the paper repository. I suspect that's gonna be something like a week, maybe 10 days, and we're gonna announce that uh, early in the week, probably Monday. Okay. And we have time for one more question. Yeah, maybe two or three, yes, yeah. How many are you looking at? Millions. 
Okay. All right. So there's a question about whether there is a symposium and not all participants are willing to do things online. Should they reconsider reapplying for next year or just present with those who may get it? Um, that's a good question. I, uh, not everyone will need to participate to make the symposia a go. We hope we can encourage you, uh, you working with us to make those symposia maximally a go because that's going to really be fabulous, you know, and it's part of this also collective innovation and experiment. Uh, if it, I suppose, if it doesn't hit threshold, those will need to submit from the competitive side and resubmit and be reviewed. I mean, those become new submissions, uh, I suppose, but of course there'll be all kinds of new submissions. I wouldn't encourage, I don't think, I don't think the best choice for symposia or for papers is to start massively withdrawing and massively resubmitting. Uh, unless someone, unless, unless there's a massive hiatus of doing excellent work this year. And so since there, that's, you know, kind of unrealistic. We hope fine work is going on and there are continued no, new cohorts of important symposia ideas and paper submissions. If we have double the amount of submissions next year, then the success rate will be half the amount. And, and so um, I would, I would, only I would, I suppose, I would not signal, you know, uh, with a manuscript submission, you submit to a journal, anyone can resubmit a new manuscript, but the, those that most typically do would be those that are encouraged under a revise and resubmit mode. So I would say um, uh, I would use the revise and resubmit mode very, very judiciously. And those that fold should view it as a fold. I suppose some may come back. You know, that happens. I have to tell you more than we would all like, and I'm sure you see it at the program level, just a little fine tuning. And didn't we see the same thing last year? Well, you know, I mean, that's almost like a, what we call p hacking in articles. You know, you write five articles that could have been in one, but you have every finding in different articles. Well, this could happen. We're hoping that this virtual meeting doesn't encourage that. Um, and that you work with us um, on that. And we're going to try to ensure that just if one or two drop off, that the symposium can be a go. Tony? Okay. Um, we have a question about how poster sessions will be accommodated. Okay, so, so this is, so, um, this is it. I, I want to underscore this to our leadership and to our program chairs. You recognize as program chairs, and other offices and shares of SIGs, that there are two types of submissions to ARA for the open submission. One is a paper submission. Those papers are competitively selected irrespective of the modality. The mode of presentation is threefold. Some papers accepted are presented in sessions. Some papers accepted are in roundtables and some papers accepted are in poster sessions. Part of the AERA rule is because uh, authors really felt there was a, too much of a stratification system and the coin of the realm was paper submissions. It really isn't because sometimes those things don't really go here. But we accept a paper as a paper. And when we talk about this gallery, actually this gallery that we're using was initially intended for posters in, in place-based meetings. And we are using it and making it a paper gallery. Every paper accepted will have the opportunity to present. And those that it's, I don't want to say most right for, but we see it as right for everything. Uh, but those that it's most right for is what this platform was invented for, for poster sessions. And I'll, so all, all papers accepted through um, uh, for presentation in either posters, sessions, or roundtables will be in this paper gallery. Uh, there will be only one presenting author. There won't be an opportunity to split it across presenting authors. 
that those presenting authors uh, will be acknowledged um, and listed, of course, as authors with the same kind of contact information and biographical information. Maybe one more? Yeah. Um, based on a couple of questions, I think it would be good to talk about uh, the fact that there's no charge, there's no fee for participating in the virtual conference. Right, right. This is, uh, there's no, um, you know, all attendees should register to come to the place-based annual meeting and will be expected to register in 2021, whether they are presenting or just attending. This year, whether you're attending or whether presenting, there is no charge. Everything will be refunded uh, from registration fees already committed for those who want to make a voluntary contribution. We welcome it. We don't even mind you're encouraging those who can within their resources to help defray these costs, but there is no registration fee for attending or presenting. Uh, so that's it. So it's uh, it's a free it's a free activity, underwritten by the association, open to the public, open to, the public. Open, uh, to any attendees. So we hope all attendees who typically would come, whether presenting or not, many come for other reasons, including to learn, and uh, and that we widen that net, which is one of the virtues uh, of, of participants participating in the virtual session. You will reach far larger audiences. We're going to encourage uh, those in the policy sector and uh, across spheres and those in practice and teachers uh, across, the, uh, the, across the world to view this as a way of in, engaging and learning about research and, and visit it often. If you didn't understand something the first time, you can view it on demand or go back to the paper session and hear the words of the author or post questions or engage in threaded discussion. All right, well, we hope this worked. If it didn't, um, uh, if it didn't, I'm going to give you uh, my email, which is, uh, which really is available to state chairs and leaders. It's flavine, A-E-R-A dot net. And then, while I said if it didn't, actually, it's a, it, this would be a great place to post any of your thoughts about pre-convention events, things that we spoke to here, but topics that we didn't cover, because this will be iterative. If you can join tomorrow um, and you've got questions that you really think we should open with, you know, because we don't know whether it will be entirely uh, SIG leaderships that didn't participate today that will participate tomorrow, so we'll cover some of the same territory, but uh, on the other hand, there may be things that are really important. Uh, the um, uh, easiest way to get them to us and to me, I'll say right now, is to send them to me, flavine at era.net, um, and um, uh, we'll monitor my email closely and program it into uh, whether we decide to have a, uh, an additional meeting or when we will on what topics. We're here to, we're here to collaborate with you and we hope that this is, uh, uh, is a good beginning and, and that it has been informative and helpful and allowed you our, our heart and soul uh, to recognize, uh, to understand better what we're thinking and, and uh, to be sure that we address the, the things that have not yet been considered uh, in, uh, in, in our plan. So thank you all and come back tomorrow and let me know if you have uh, questions that we need to deal with. Thank you.